Let's play a little game called Don't Do This, Do That. I started this on my TikTok and the video did really well. A lot of people were in disagreement with me, so I thought I would take these little videos from TikTok, bring them to YouTube so you all can tell me your thoughts because overall, don't tell my TikTok following this, but my YouTube subscribers definitely have better taste or at least taste that aligns with me more than my TikTok followers. So, sh so basically, I'm gonna tell you interior design stuff not to do and some suggestions of what I think you should do instead. These are my opinions, this is what I like. If you like my taste, then watch this video, and if you don't, I mean, watch it anyways, why not? <laughs> so let's get started on don't do this, do that. Okay, so this was my most unpopular don't on my TikTok. It caused a lot of people to comment about it saying, why Why are you telling us not to do this? And maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you'll agree with them, but I say don't do subway tile, but do, 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 do. Oh, this is kind of bad wording. So do, do a more unique ceramic tile. A subway tile can be a classic, but it is also so overdone to the point where I just really don't want to see subway tile in anyone's kitchens or bathrooms really anymore. If you are going to do subway tile, I suggest stacking them in more of a grid line instead of the scattered way to install it. I think that just looks a little bit more sleek and makes the tile at least a little bit more unique to what everyone else is doing. So instead of subway tile, I do suggest to do a more ceramic tile, maybe in a square shape like these. I love this tile. I think it's really unique looking and it kind of gives you this more natural feel to your kitchen. And a lot of people say that these types of tiles are a little bit more expensive, which is true. It's a little bit pricier than subway tile, but it does not mean that it's hard to get. These are actually sold at Home Depot and Lowe's. So it's a very common tile nowadays. Maybe they will get cheaper now that these are becoming more popular, I think maybe the price will eventually go down. I don't know. So yeah, I say don't do subway tile and do do a more unique and organic uh, ceramic tile that just isn't subway tile. So goodbye to white kitchens and goodbye to subway tile. Don't do a spread out small framed gallery wall, but instead do a gallery wall that consists of larger frames and place them a little bit closer together. This is kind of one of my pet peeves of when people have really tiny frames and they kind of put them in mismatched areas above their couch or their bed or whatever. I think that looks a little strange to me. I think if you're going to create a gallery wall, you want to make sure all of the frames are close together. Think of it as if you're creating one large art piece. You want everything to be a little bit closer together so that it doesn't look super spread out and you see a lot of wall in between the frames, if that makes sense. And I know frames can be a bit expensive, but if you head to your local Goodwill or Salvation Army, they really do have a ton of frames. Maybe it has some questionable art inside of it, but take the art out, put your own whatever in there, and then slap up a gallery wall. I'm not saying don't get rid of all your small frames, just try to incorporate different sizes and make sure that they are close together, in my opinion. Don't buy furniture pieces that are made out of really cheap suede and velvet. I can't tell you enough how much I despise those fabrics because they just don't look like nice fabric. When companies like Wayfair or All Modern create, you know, they say a suede couch or a velvet couch and it arrives and it's like this fake material that's not actually the type of of fabric you were expecting. So I would avoid, you know, pieces like this. I would avoid furniture pieces that may have a cheap fabric. If you, if it looks like it's cheap, it's going to arrive cheap. So instead, do buy pieces of furniture from Craigslist, OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, Cherish, all of those places that I've mentioned in pretty much every video. I think it is so much more valuable and you get so much more for your money when you buy a used piece of furniture that is actually of good quality. I bought my sofa off of OfferUp. It was from this family that lived in the suburbs of Chicago and this couch sat in their living room that they never used. You know that one room that no one goes in except it's like Christmas morning or whatever. Yeah, that was their couch. So it was basically brand new and I I absolutely love it. So I would try to stay away from those fast furniture companies. It's just going to give you really terrible fabric, terrible quality, and it's really just not worth it. So if you're on a budget, buy something used. If you have a little bit more money to spend, I think you should just spend that little extra dollar to get something that is of good quality and is going to last. So basically, don't buy furniture with cheap fabric and instead buy something used or just splurge a little. This one is very specific and it's something that I feel like I'm like the only one who notices this or maybe I'm wrong, maybe other people do, but don't 
buy mid-century furniture pieces that have diagonal legs, but do buy furniture that has straight legs. The diagonal legs to me are a very retro type feel that I'm not a huge fan of when I'm purchasing furniture. There's a lot of side tables that are offered with these diagonal legs. Those are the types of tables that I really hate the most. I think like a dining table isn't as bad to have diagonal legs. I just personally prefer everything that have straight legs, especially my mid-century furniture pieces. I don't want them to look retro. I don't want them to feel like I'm living in the Jetsons. So I shy away from anything that has a diagonal leg. I like to have a straight leg. I don't know what it is. It makes it feel a little bit more modern. And it's the type of mid-century furniture I look out for. I try to avoid more of the retro styles and stick to the mid-century pieces that are a little bit more classic and, and sleek and kind of fit in with your modern space. So again, that's a very specific little opinion of mine. Do with it what you will. Don't do diagonal legs. Do 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 straight legs. Okay, another unpopular opinion because so many people are doing this to their spaces. This kind of goes hand in hand with subway tile and all white kitchens. So don't vomit brass all over your kitchen, but do incorporate brass in smaller touches and make sure it's a more antiqued brass, something a little bit more vintage feeling. I can't tell you enough how much I hate kitchens that are all white, have all brass, and have marble. I'm pretty sure this is a majority of kitchens in America. So if you're going to incorporate brass, which I do like, I do like a nice little touch of brass. Specifically, I like brass faucets. Incorporate a nice antiqued brass vintage faucet in your kitchen. And you can even do the handles too, but just avoid that really bright colored gold. I would stick more to an antique brass and try to keep it to a minimum. It doesn't need to be everywhere. If it's on your cabinet handles and your sink faucet, maybe you don't need brass stools or brass dining table legs. You know, just just relax a little on it. It kind of goes hand in hand with my boho vomit. Like let's not vomit boho. Let's not also vomit brass. Are we all in agreement on this one at least? I talk about lighting in every single video, so we'll make this one nice and quick because I think we all understand where I'm going with this one. Don't use fluorescent lighting, but do use nice warm lighting. That is so important in your space to have good lighting. I've said this so many times, even if you have the most outdated home or maybe you're renting a space that is a little bit more outdated or, you know, it just doesn't, isn't fully your style. Focus on the lighting. Replace all the bulbs to warm lighting. Add in some nice table lamps, floor lamps, whatever it is. Lighting will change your entire space. Also, if you're handy, you can install dimmers. It's actually extremely easy to install dimmers. My sister even rents an apartment where she installed dimmers on her own lights. That's how easy it is. It takes 15 minutes out of your day. Just make sure to shut off your power when you do it. If you want a good tutorial on how to do this, go check out Brady Tolbert on Instagram. He recently posted about how to install Zimmers. It's extremely easy. I know it sounds a little terrifying to mess with electrical stuff, but it's, I've done it. My sister's done it. It's possible. And I'm telling you now it will change your space. So don't use fluorescent lighting, but do use warm lighting and install dimmers if you can. Don't hang your curtains right at the top of your window, but instead hang them almost to your ceiling or at least a few inches above the top of your window. This is guaranteed to make your space feel taller. A lot of people think you have to put your curtain rod right at the tip of your window, but you really don't have to. Just invest in a curtain that is a few inches longer and put the rod just a few inches above the top of the window, maybe as far to the ceiling as you can. It will make your space feel so grand and it will make your window feel larger. It just, little touches like this are worth it. Maybe it's a little bit more expensive to buy a curtain that has, you know, an extra six inches on it, but it really will do wonders for your space. So don't hang your curtains right above the window, but do hang them almost to your ceiling or as high up as, as you can put them. Don't use decor all from one era. If you're furnishing your house, not everything needs to be modern, not everything needs to be mid-century, not everything needs to be boho. Maybe mix and match a little, incorporate some modern pieces, incorporate maybe some art deco pieces, have a mid-century, you know, piece of furniture as well. It's really nice to mix everything. It keeps your space feeling fresh and it doesn't kind of take you back into a time warp, especially if you like your space to feel a little bit more eclectic. I personally like to mix and match all of my furniture pieces. And then of course, add in a few trends here and there because trends are fun to participate in. 
I participate in trends, why not? But you don't want your whole space to be what's in style right now. So I like to incorporate a few pieces that are on trend, maybe a travertine side table or that checker print. Those are very trendy right now and I like them, so I'm going to incorporate them. So don't have your space be all from one design era, but instead mix and match and don't be scared to take risks into pieces that you maybe have never purchased or used before. All right, that is the end to my first round of don't do this, do that. TikTok liked it. Does YouTube like it? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you like this video and I'll make more because I have a lot of things that I think you shouldn't do and I'll give you my opinions on what I think you should do instead. So if you haven't subscribed, go subscribe, go follow me on my TikTok and let's sign off with a little goo because we haven't seen the goo in a bit and here she is sitting on my lap this entire time. She has a botched haircut right now. Ugh. Sometimes she she's very old and sometimes she just looks very old. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to you over. All right, well that is it and I'll see you in a week. Happy Sunday.